Welcome everybody to my poster presentation. My name is Stefan Klara. I'm from the Johannes Kepler University Linz, and I will present you our newly developed temperature model calibration for a resonant pipe viscosity and density sensor. Let's have a look at the sensor setup. The sensor consists of a sensor housing and a resonator element. The resonator element consists of two concentrically aligned pipes with flywheels at each end. In the flywheels, we have four permanent magnets, which in combination with these electromagnetic coils are used to actuate and read out the torsional motion of the resonator. The resonator element is fixed to the sensor housing via this torsional spring, which is located in the center of the resonator element at the same position where also the nodal point of the torsional mode is located. The sensor is designed as a through flow sensor. This means the fluid flows in by inlet number 10, flows then in the space between the two pipes on the left side, then through the inner pipe on the right side, then again in the space between the two pipes back to the middle and out of the outlet. For the measurement setup, we place the whole sensor and also an automated sampling system into a highly accurate temperature chamber. And then we measure different viscosity standards at different temperatures. The temperature range were from, were from 15 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. And the viscosity range was from 12 millipascal seconds up to 1.6 pascal seconds. We also measured the air-loaded resonance characteristics of the sensor so that we could calculate back to the unloaded resonance characteristics. For the sensor model, we used then the hydrodynamic function. The hydrodynamic function describes the fluid resistance acting on a vibrating body. We use the real and the imaginary part of the hydrodynamic functions to define two new functions, GA and GB, which are both only dependent on Xi, which includes the viscosity, the density, and the resonance frequency, and the temperature. Then we approximated these two functions by higher order polynomials, and we calibrated this with our calibration measurements so that we could extract the coefficients for these polynomials. Doing so, we could then calculate back to the viscosity and to the density, and we um, reached very nice results. The relative error for the viscosity was smaller than 1%, and the relative error for the density was smaller than 0.15%. And with this, I'm at the end of my short presentation. If you are interested in more details, I'm happy to see you at my poster. Thank you for your attention.